Good morning, Sunday morning here in the LBC and wanted to come on and talk a little bit about momentum of our mental health and some of what I would propose as I've found myself wanting to help in the name of mental health is that we all have mental health and I feel like this is part of mental health awareness, right? And even what's so beautiful about our being more aware of those of us who really struggle more deeply with challenges that can come up with our mental health, maybe for short periods of time in our lives or over a lifetime, right? And how much that affects everybody around that person who loves them, right? So I love that the, the mental health awareness that's coming up through those of us who have been struggling most, perhaps. Helps us get into an awareness, though, that we all have mental health that perhaps we can take care of. And that we all have mental health that wherever we're at on the spectrum with our feelings about our mental health, right? Like, how is it going in our head? How is it feeling what's going on in our head, right? And how is it working in our lives, right? what's happening in our minds, in our mindset, and things that we might call our mental health. And yeah, I find myself just very fascinated and even hopeful about what's possible when we realize that we all have mental health and that there seems to be a momentum to something, to everything, right, in being human because it is all energy as well. But to realize that there is a momentum to our mental health and that the next step is that we can realize that we can have an impact on our mental health. And so that when we realize that we all have mental health, right, and then even open up to the idea that there is a momentum happening with everything in our lives, right, because it's all energy. And so even with our mental health, which to me includes mood, right, is kind of an indicator of our mental health too, right? Because often our mental health is going to translate into how we feel, right? And then also how we feel like we can function in the world. So, yeah, I'm really fascinated with, filled with, fueled by this idea, this realization that we all have mental health and that there's a momentum to our mental health and that wherever we're at in the spectrum of our feelings with our mental health and even our awareness with our own mental health. Like, how is my mental health? Maybe you're not sure. <laughs> and that's where we want to bring in like one of the big tools of yoga and meditation that helps so much that I see with mental health is starting to live more from a place of non-judgment. There's a reason that all the traditions, all the philosophies, most of the religions encourage it <laughs> because as a psychology something like bringing in non-judgment can really change our momentum with our mental health right because often that judgment that most of us I feel are doing with ourselves every day possibly all day long and possibly in kind of terrible awful ways with ourselves right and then when we look at for instance this is just an, a piece of this possible puzzle when we look at how something like that judgment with ourselves is playing a role in our experiences with our mental health right in our feelings of things like depression in our feelings of things like anxiety right those are some of those big ones that we're really aware of right now that a lot of us are struggling with and I feel like yeah part of this perspective too is to acknowledge that part of being human is that we're open to feeling all the feelings, right? And so things like depression and anxiety, right, can be part of a normal spectrum of even mental health, right? And that can be part of our approach that can really help to just not expect ourselves to only be happy, right? But also to take those feelings seriously, right, as an indicator, as something that can draw us inward more to see what's happening often with our mental health, right? And then to just, yeah, start to play with what we can do to take care of our mental health. And I am having so much fun realizing that that's what I see we're doing with a lot of these practices that we could call yoga and meditation is these things that are actually building 
our mental health, right? Whether it's helping us build our focus, helping us decide each day what's most important to us, how we want to focus, right? Because that's really going to determine how we feel and how things like mood are going and how even our mental health is. And even who do we listen to <laughs> is going to play a big role in our mental health, right? Realizing it's all meditation, everything that we soak up in our days, in our moments. So who we're listening to, what we're listening to, what we're paying attention to, what we're watching does have an impact on our mental health, right? Undoubtedly. So we can start to be more conscious with that. That's where this is about being more conscious, right? And maybe making it just as simple as seeing like more about what is connecting for you, right? What helps you feel more connected as far as what's going to foster better feelings with your mental health, right? Better momentum. And yeah, just again, knowing that it's all energy. So things like, especially if we do feel like some of those extremes are some that we deal with more than others, maybe like anxiety is a big one for you, or depression is one that you feel like, you know, is when you visit more than you'd like to. I think that's where we can just start to, in the self-awareness with the non-judgment, but with a practical solution-oriented approach, realize if that feels true, and then start to feed ourselves, fuel ourselves, add in more things that are going to help us with things that might help us lift those feelings of depression, right? Shift those feelings of depression or anxiety, if we're talking about anxiety. Um, whatever's going to help us shift that, right? And that's where we can really start to play with the tools. Yes, and even things like some of the poses of yoga can totally shift things like our nervous systems that have a lot to do with a lot of these experiences, right? So that's where this, I'm seeing it's about a holistic approach to mental health, which can include meds too, if that's what someone needs. I'm going to continue to be very humble and open that I honor whatever works for people, right? And so if using the meds from the doctors helps you, then do that. But I'm also excited about what can we do above and beyond those meds, in addition to those meds, and then also maybe if we want to get off those meds, starting to have some things that we are going to do differently because probably if we don't do things differently and we made it only about the meds, perhaps, you know, things might get more extreme again. So I'm, yeah, excited and empowered and fueled with how I can help because I do come from a background in psychology, having gone to graduate school in psychology before I started to study and teach yoga for 20 years now. So it's fun for me to realize I can play a role in sharing what's possible in how things like yoga and meditation, things that connect us, reconnect us, can have an impact on our mental health and that we all have mental health, right? That we can, and now I think we're seeing we need to take care of especially maybe in today's times when things can feel so intense. Now more than ever, maybe we need to do things to take care of our own mental health, right? Because there is a momentum to it. We all do have mental health. And wherever we're at in the spectrum, the more that we can do to address that, attend to that, remember it's all energy, and that there's a momentum to it. So that's where I'm a big fan of the more like everyday approach and also really taking mornings as an opportunity to get some great momentum going because energetically we have a lot, uh, even more of a fresh start, you could say, in the mornings. So, yeah, that's why I'm all about how we tune ourselves, right, with our practices, with our perspectives, with our psychology that we're using. And that does boil down to things you're doing each day that tune you, right? And that you can start to see this is tuning your mental health, not only your physical health, right? Although your physical health is part of it. But... Yeah, and then it's also about doing things that just feed you and make you feel better and help you feel more connected, like getting into nature, like listening to music that makes you feel better and happier, like taking walks, like being with people that fill your heart, right? So, yeah, doing more pleasurable activities. These are all things now even that the Western doctors are recommending to their clients for mental health and shifting things. It is about practical changes and also ways that we can become more self-aware even things like journaling meditation really help us to build that awareness to help us to see some of the patterns and things that we may be doing that are part of if we're having more extreme experiences right and just keep us out of that extreme experience and again take advantage of the fact that it's energy and there's the momentum 
and that we all can play a role in our own mental health, right? Whatever we label it, whether we have a label on our mental health or not, that we all have mental health and the good news is we can take care of it. And then maybe the new news is we realize we should take care of it. We don't want to wait, right? Till it's so extreme because it's harder, potentially harder to shift once it gets more extreme, right? So yes. And if I can help you at all with ideas for any of those issues that we might call part of mental health and mood. And I'm excited to, yeah, be bringing you my book soon too on how yoga and meditation can help with this very important realm of being human, right? Mental health matters. We all have it. There's a momentum to it. So let's take care of it, right? All right. That's your message for today. Thanks, you guys. Love you. Thanks for being here. Namaste.